Hello everyone. So today we're going to learn um, what is reinforcement learning. And also to be more excited, uh, we're going to try the, the reinforcement learning models on the car that can really drive in the real world. Uh, so the car is called AWS uh, Deep Racer. Uh, you can buy one from Amazon. So uh, to be honest, it's not that cheap. Um, and there are two types of cars. Uh, we have the basic car, which has only one camera. Or we have another car that has a LiDAR sensor, so it can detect the, the, the object, calculate distance, and it has two cameras. So with more uh, sensors, the car will get more information and uh, should be able to, to drive better. And once you have the car, you can follow their uh, Getting Started tutorial on AWS website, uh, where they provided very detailed uh, video tutorials like uh, how to assemble the deep racer, uh, it's not that hard. How to collaborate your deep racer. You can also build your own track uh, um, because uh, in most cases, a car only works on the uh, on the track that has a very dark, uh, dark trackers. And also you also need the white tapes to tell the car where are the boundaries of the roads of the track or the track. Um, and then you can build your models and you can deploy the model to the car so the car can drive by itself. Uh, if you are interested, you can join the other AWS Deep Racer uh, communities where probably you can start a racing that uh, either uh, in the internet or uh, in real world. Okay, so once you have the car or, or without the car, so actually if you don't have a car, you can still try to learn uh, reinforcement uh, learning that on Deep Racer. So, so whether or not you have a car, uh, so you can go to AWS console, and you can just search Deep Racer, and it will bring you to this uh, page. And uh, if you go on left, you can see that where you have your uh, your racer profiles, which you can add to your details. Uh, so I just changed the name like Student One Demo, and uh, they have the Getting Started page, which I highly recommend that. Uh, uh, just look at this uh, getting started course. Uh, it's not very long, so talking about um, reinforcement learning. Uh, so basically, there are three types of the machine learning models. So we have supervised learning, uh, we have unsupervised learning, and we have reinforcement learning. So in reinforcement learning, we don't provide like the, the labels, etc. Instead, we have an agent. Is in our case is a car. So it will interact with the environment. And the environment, in our case, is just the track. So the agent will in learn to in how to interact with environment. And also during those interactions, so for some actions, we will give some uh, scores like uh, rewards. So if they are doing a bad job, otherwise they will have zero scores. OK, so for example, in this case, the car will receive 2.2 .2 because in this iteration, it just, the, the, the total score is 2 plus 0.2, so that's 2.2. .2. And then the car will try other iterations and then try to maximize the score. So in the second iteration, the, the points will be uh, 0.2 plus 2 plus 0.2, so it's 2.4. So the car will try uh, multiple ways and also make sure that uh, they can reach a high score eventually. Um, okay, so with more experience, the agent will get better and better so that they can reach the, uh, the final lines um, instead of taking those random actions. Okay, so that's a very basic introduction about the reinforce uh, reinforcement learning models. And then here is something that you can customize, like for example, uh, the reward function. For example, if the car stay on the track, and what are the rewards that you're going to give? Um, and also, if the car follow the center lines, and also, uh, what are the rewards you, you're going to give, like the distance uh, between center lines, uh, etc. Uh, so whether or not you give it a high reward, also lower reward, etc. Uh, so for those different type of the parameters, and how are you going to define those rewards? So that's something that you can uh, you can customize. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and create our model. So uh, before creating a model, so before creating a model, so you can go to your your garage uh, where uh, you can 
specify what kind of the cars uh, you're going to use. Uh, again, this is totally uh, virtual cars, so you can build as many cars as possible. So, for example, here, uh, you can say I want, I have an, a car, I call it demo car, and and then you can change the colors. And here you can tell uh, is that has one camera or it has a uh, two camera. Okay, so that is a stereo camera, um, which is better than the, a single camera, or whether or not you have a LiDAR sensor or not. Okay, so you can customize your cars uh, first, and then you can sit down, and now you can see I have a, a car that has a, a LiDAR sensor and a stereo camera. Uh, I have a demo car that I just created, and this is the original car, which has a single camera. Okay, so... Uh, so once you, you you are happy with your cars, and of course you have a real car, uh, you may want to create a, a car that match with your the, your real car. And now we are going to train the models. And so you, you have to be careful because the models are not cheap. So it takes about like uh, 5 or $10 for each model that I have trained. Um, so here let's see. Go, let's, just give a quick, quick demo, so we create a model. And you can give the model name, uh, so I call it demo. And you can choose the, the track, so uh, if you know that which track you're going to race. Um, you can also view more tracks. Okay. And that, those are some tracks that are used in the real world um, computations. Okay. And next, you can choose the race type. So, for example, if you have one single camera, and you can use a time trial, which means that uh, uh, the car that uh, uh, the first car that reached the uh, reached the goal is, is a winner. Or you can try using this object avoidance. That is uh, that is uh, especially if you ha have a car that has a uh, lidar sensors, uh, where you can choose uh, is that a fixed location or those are the random locations and also number of the objects on the road. And if you have two cars, and then you can use this head-to-head -head racing so, so that each car will try to avoid each other. Um, and you can also set the, uh, the speed, uh, the number of the cars, etc. Et so for beginners, I would recommend you start from the time trial, uh, and later, uh, uh, you can start, you can try the other uh, models. Again, you can try to use in different algorithms, and for different algorithms, they have the different hyperparameters. Okay, so um, uh, here I'm just use the default one, and later when you get more experience, and you can come back here and also uh, change the uh, hyperparameters. Okay, um, and also uh, keep in mind that if you want more iterations, it will cost your more credits on AWS. And depends on the algorithm you selected, you may have the option to choose different action space. Uh, if you're interested, you can check their documents uh, to see what's uh, the exact details. And next, you're going to choose a car. So I'm going to use my demo car. Uh, so that essentially they are load the configuration of this car uh, to train the car in this model. Okay, so this is the reward function that we uh, talked earlier. So, um, so this is a function that is uh, uh, let, let the agent to follow the center line. Uh, you can also uh, try the other example. Uh, for example, follow the central line uh stay inside of the stay inside of the two borders okay and prevent zag zigzag okay and also object avoidance okay and once you, you use the function of, of course you can totally customize your own function if you like uh, once you uh, ha choose a function and uh, you can also tweak those uh, parameters so for example uh, if the car likely to crash or close to off the track, so what is the reward? Like you can give it to zero if you like. Um, 
uh, and also if the uh, if this uh, is follow uh, the keep uh, close to the central line, so what is the reward, etc. And then you may want to validate your code. Okay, and if that passed, uh, you can also set the uh, the stop conditions. Uh, so the maximum time. So uh, the maximum time must be between five and also uh, one thousand four hundred and forty minutes. Again, if you train the model longer, the model will perform better. Uh, if you train the model shorter, the uh, uh, the model may not. It will save your credits. So if you train shorter, um, it will save your credits. Okay, and and also, do you want to submit this one to a race? Uh, you can check no. Okay, uh, if you check no, and you don't need to uh, to accept these terms. Okay, so now I'm going ahead and create the model. Okay, uh, so now the model is now uh, being loaded. So, okay, is now uh, initialized. It's being initialized. So. After a few minutes, uh, you will be able to see that uh, how the model is training. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this is now when your model is being in a training session. So you can see that uh, the car is now uh, moving and off the road. Okay, and come back and moving and also off the road, uh, and later uh, after it trained for like a few iterations and you will be able to see the scores uh, and also the uh, uh, here so on the chart so after a few iterations and hopefully uh, you will be able to see that the scores will uh, go up uh, so like this okay uh, so you can see it will uh, it will take like one hour so that's the initial time that we set up earlier uh, you can also stop the training if you like. Um, again, the longer uh, the model will perform better. However, it will also cost uh, more credits. Okay, uh, so I'm going to stop this training um, uh, because I uh, don't want to waste my credits. And instead, I'm going to show you the other models I already trained. So it will take like one hour to to be to be complete. So I have two more models. So I have this 3D test, which means that I used a car that has a LiDAR sensor and also two stereo cameras. I also used uh, this uh, test for like just use their base model. So uh, this is also use a base uh, type of the car. So it has only one camera. So let me show you how it looks like. So uh, you, can all, you can see the, the scores. So you can see after uh, several iterations, and uh, you can see the percentage of the computation. So finally, the, the car is able to reach the target. And also the reward. So it reached the reward. So, uh, so it, the reward also increased. Um, and once you have completed the training, uh, you're able to evaluate your cars. So uh, for example, once you have the model, you can start a new uh, evaluation. Which basically is, is more like uh, you're doing the uh, uh, test the performance with uh, your testing data. So uh, you can even rewatch your evaluation video. So that's how the car is doing in the evaluation sensor uh, of the session. So uh, that's the first round. Um, and that's the second test. And that is third test. So you can see how your, how your car was doing. And you can see the time. So to complete this uh, uh, this test, uh, it used uh, uh, almost 28 uh, seconds. OK, so, so now you have the model. Uh, once you have the model, uh, you can download your model. So here you can copy it to S3, or you can just download model locally. And then you can deploy your model to your cars. So you need to connect uh, uh, your car with your computer, which I will show you later. And next, you can uh, do a race. So for example, if you deploy your car, uh, your model to two cars, you can let the car run in the physical world. Or you can create a race that, uh, that let your model to compete virtually. So for example, you can go to community race. And here you can create two types of the race. You can do the community race, which that uh, all the AWS users, uh, they can uh, participate. Uh, so you have more. 
uh, tracker, uh, trackers that you can select, or you can organize a student community race. So if you are doing this, uh, students, they have to apply uh, AWS DeepRacer student account, and then they can use that account, that, uh, that account to train their models, um, and also uh, to join the race by using that account. So and that will save a lot of credits. Uh, however, you can see uh, uh, there are a few options here. So for example, uh, they can only race in this classic race format, um, and also only one type of race at a time trial, and also they have fewer uh, race records. Okay, so uh, trackers. So here I'm going to go ahead and create a race. Uh, so I'm going to do a classic race, and also I'm going to do a time trial. Uh, you can define a race, so I'm going to say demo race test. And you can tell when it will start. So I see uh, it will start today uh, at uh, in one minute, and it will end tomorrow. OK. And you can choose uh, the trackers and also directions. Okay, and submit. Okay, uh, and now this is a URL that you can copy and you can share with other users, so other users with AWS uh, console, AWS account. You can just open this URL. Okay, so uh, so here I'm going. I just switch a different user account. Uh, where you can see this is a user that is student demo two. And the user also has a model that trained. So, uh, with again with a base model. So, if you look at the the evaluation result, it is uh, slower than the the student one. So, the student one the, the time was less than twenty eight seconds. And for this one, it's uh, more than twenty eight seconds. So, you can see this model actually um, is not faster as the previous models. Okay. So, uh, and then you can just Join that race, so just copy and paste that URL. Um, you can see it's a time to start, so uh, so you can start enter the race. Uh, you can choose your model, so this is student one. Enter the race. Okay, and you can see now you submitted the uh, the result. So now uh, they are just evaluating the result, and uh, for student one, so. Uh, so if you go to your race, you can see that is uh, uh, the race that uh, I just created. So demo race test. And so I enter the race. Uh, so as a creator, so I can also participate the race. So so here you can see I can choose a model. So um, I'm going to use my base model as well. I'm not sure this will work. Uh, so test. Okay, so now I enter this race, so you can see that uh, my model is now being evaluated. So if I go back to the first student, uh, it is still being evaluated. Okay, so while we are waiting for the model being evaluated, I do want to show you the result of my uh, previous race. So, uh, so this is the race that I created uh, earlier, and if you go to the, the leaderboard, and you can see in this race that student one performed better. Uh, if you remember that in the um, in the evaluation, student one um, the time was uh, faster than the student two. Uh, so the uh, so and also you can see as student two was a gap to the first uh, to the winner. And you can also even rewatch the uh, the video of the race. So that's uh, student one. And that is a student two. All right. So next, uh, I'm going to deploy uh, my model to my real car. So I have two cars. One has one camera, and also another car has two cameras. Uh, so I'm going to uh, try different type of the models and see how the car can drive in the physical world. All right. Uh, so now I connected. The car with my uh, computer. So you can see here, uh, we can see the camera here, 
uh, that's a camera from the car and if I go to the menu mode so uh, let's increase the speed so that you can see that we can manually control the car so let's see forward backward all right uh, let's now load the model so let's uh, allow the model to let allow the car to drive by itself. So I already uploaded uh, the 10 minutes image only model, 6 minutes image only model, and also 60 minutes with a LiDAR uh, sensor. So right now this car has only one camera, so it can only run those two models that is within one camera. So let's first let's do the 10 minutes. And I, I don't think it will work uh, because it was only trained uh, like in 10 minutes. Uh, so now we are uh, loading the model and we also need, may need to increase the maximum speed otherwise the car will not move so i'm going to give it uh, 90. okay so now it's ready so let's go ahead start Okay, uh, so it bumps uh, the wall, so I'm going to pause here. All right, so uh, 10 minutes model, it didn't go too long, so let's now switch to a 60 minutes model. So uh, hopefully uh, this one will uh, do a better job. So we are loading the model. All right, uh, let's go ahead and give it start. Okay, I think it's doing a little bit better, um, but still it goes off the road. All right, uh, so now we have a new car. Uh, I removed the cover so that we can see uh, the, uh, the inside of the car where we have the sensor, LiDAR sensor on top, which is not running. Um, we also have two cameras that in front, so that's why we can see this stereo camera. Uh, so let's now load the, the, the LiDAR model. And we can also enable the LiDAR on our screen so that you can see basically uh, the sensor send out uh, uh, light pulse, laser pulse to the surrounding objects, and the pulse will touch object and also response uh, return back. Um, the sensor will capture return signal and will calculate the time difference, convert time difference into a spatial difference or the distance difference. So let's also increase uh, the speed a little bit. Um, because normally the car will drive very slow if we give it uh, the minimal speed. Okay, so theoretically, with more sensors, the car should work drive better. So, I think across, let's start the vehicle. Okay, uh, so I just recalibrated. Uh, so now you can see the car is now be able to move. Okay, so. So now let's let the model to drive the car. So now um, and the car is, is able to move. So start. Oh, I think that's pretty nice. Uh, 